This is Jackie Markham interviewing Mona Burley on the 16th of November 2023. Hello Mona, would you like to tell me where you were born? Yes, I was born at Hampton Wafer, which is up by Bredenbury in Herefordshire. And when I was three, we moved down to Eaton Hall, near Stoke Prior, also in Herefordshire. And um, you say we, was that ju just you and your parents? Or? Just me and my parents. I don't have any brothers or sisters. Oh. And did you live on a farm there? Yes, it was quite, quite a large farm, I think about 500 acres. But um, by the time I was 17, my father had died and we had to move to Lawton Cross in Erdsland, I think it is. It could be Kingsland. It is Kingsland, just, yes. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah, that's that was you and your mother. We, yes. we actually haven't said what year you were born, just to oh, get things in perspective. I was born in 1936. Oh. The okay. end of 1936. So you had you experienced the war as a small child? Yes, I do remember the war. Um, I think the only thing I really remember of any significance is when a bomb fell in the munitions factory in Hereford. Um, oh, and a whole stick of bombs also fell up at Stocklow behind my grandparents' house. Uh, it was a plane coming back from Birmingham. Got lost, I think. It's also long ago. And dropped just on farmland. It didn't hurt anybody, really. That's the only things I remember about the war, really. Apart from Rivy, obviously. <coughs> but I do believe that your uncle, who lived in, is it Sheffield? Northumberland. Northumberland was bombed. Yes, he, my uncle, uh, my father's brother and his wife got bombed out of their farm up in just outside Newcastle. Another bomber going home hadn't dropped the whole lot of his bombs and there must have been a light showing somewhere on the farm but um, they only lost a horse, a cat, and the cows were all in the shed and the part of the roof grazed one of the cow's tails. But that was the only damage that was really done. But um, we moved out of Hampton way far, down to Eton, and Uncle George came down with all his animals on the train to Lewis's station. And then, of course, they had to be got from the station to Hampton Wafer Farm, which I think most of them went by road. But the, um, I suppose, the chickens and cats and things like that had to be taken in a car. <laughs> Can't well, remember, I was too young. Well, no, when you say by road, they were simply driven up the road, mm. yes. And I believe they'd been driven through to Newcastle Station? It must have been. I don't know about yes. that end of the thing. Mm. But there wasn't the traffic around in those days. Mm. You could do those sort of things. Mm. Um, long time ago. Mona, before you moved to to Kingsland, you, you did have experience of Kingsland because your father rented land. Can you describe yes. that? Yes, he rented the Wegnorth which is somewhere between Kingsland and Nempster. Um, I think it was about 200 acres, um, mostly corn, but it, of course you had to have animals on it part of the time. Um, cattle and sheep, and the odd horse or two. But it was a long way to take them. In those days, we had to drive the cattle through Lempster, which was quite a hairy experience. But um, 
to drive the cattle through Lempster, um, I believe you used to ride your pony. It was your father riding a horse as well? Yes, we used to do it on horseback, but we had quite a lot of help. Um, people standing in gateways and people's gardens gateways and things like that. Because um, there's an awful lot of escape routes coming through Lemster. <laughs> But uh, it was the only way to get them from one place to another, really, in those days. Can you think how many there might have been in one well, go? Uh, not more than 18 or 20, yeah. which is still quite a lot to keep an eye on. Yes. And then to get to the Wagnalls, you, you would get to the bottom of Broad Street. How do we get Go there? to Green Lane. No, we went up Etnam Street and then up... West Street, up the Bar Gates, and out towards Kingsland. Oh, yes. And this Lemster side of Kingsland is a turning down. What's the name of the car? Green Lane. Green Lane. Uh, and you can get to the Wagnalls that way. Um, it seemed the most direct route at the time. And the, the Wagnalls is well known for flooding. It lies between the Pinsley and the Lug. Can you yes. Yes, the only bit of drama we ever had with that was one night the police rang us up and said that our sheep were getting flooded. And if we could go quickly, they could help us bring them up the railway line into Lemster and therefore back to Eton, where they would be safe which was quite a hassle. Yes, and they, and they um, stopped the train, they said. Yes, they? They, well, during the night they were able to give us enough time to get the sheep off the field and into, onto the railway line. That must have felt like quite an adventure. It was quite an adventure, actually, because it was all in the dark. <laughs> Mona, when you were 19, you and your mother moved to Lawton Villa. Can you describe the cottage, the house, the villa? In fact? The villa, really, oh. yes. It had a porch, so it was a villa. It, um, you walked in through the front door and there was a dining room one side and a sitting room the other side and you went down a passageway to the kitchen and I, I think there was a a room which was used as a cool room for, as a pantry really, I think. And then it had two little fields. You walked out of the back door onto a car park and there was a roadway going up to, I can't remember the name of the place now. Lockton Park. Lockton Park. Um, which really was a right of way for anybody, but nobody used it luckily. And then the field either side of that, which Mama kept two cows and she built them by hand. And um, she, the milk that was left over, she made into butter, which she then took in the, any left that she, we hadn't used. She used to take into a lady called Mrs. Jones, who ran a butchery business in the High Street, I think. And uh, they did a bit of bartering. <laughs> Barter was good in those days, yeah. Um, yeah. That was... Um... But now how often would your mother make butter? It depended partly on the time of year, how much milk the cows are giving, but mostly once a week. Um, but in the winter, I don't suppose she did that often because there's not so much grass, not so much milk. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember about that. And were, uh, were you involved? Oh, yes. Yes, I was involved. I got the job of churning the butter. You 
there again it depended on the time of year whether it came quickly or you had to keep going for ages to get any butter at all. Um. Uh, Mona, to keep the supply of milk up, you obviously um, needed to, to have calves. The cows needed to calve. Can you tell me a little bit about that, the calves? Yes. <clears throat> we had, uh, they were artificially inseminated. Obviously, you wouldn't have a bull just for two cows. And we tried, our mum tried to make the calves arrive roughly six months apart so that the milk supply was um, sort of constant, but it didn't always work. Um, and the calves had what, what they wanted or what they were allowed to have, and then mum milked the rest of it. And it, in making the butter, which um you said was in a big churn you what the watery stuff that comes off is of course whey what did you do with that well as far as i can remember we always had a pig or mum did sometimes two but usually just the one um and that took the whey and all the sort of stuff from the garden like the waste from the vegetables and stuff like that um, and then we had there was a man who used to come around a butcher a proper butcher but he would go around farms butchering the pig in the autumn usually um, and he, he well he would kill it in fact and then put it ready, hang it up in the garage or somewhere and um, then take it away and butcher it in about a week's time. And how did he get to you? Came on a motorbike. <laughs> can with, you... uh, and I can remember he used to strap a, f a gun to, his, to the motorbike. I think it was a what, you don't call it a 4x4, four four. what do you call it? Um, shotgun? Uh, shotgun no. it was, yes. And he, he used to say that it, he could shoot rabbits on the way. <laughs> I don't know how true that was. <laughs> um, what other animals did your mother keep? Oh, we had sheep. I can remember having about ten or a dozen sheep. And I think they were Rylands, as far as I can remember. <clears throat> and I do remember lambing time being a very anxious time. Um, but they kept the grass right after the cattle.